Welcome to the at-home edition of World of Fortnite. I'm your host, Sarah Pookie Face Lynn, and with me, as always, in spirit, is Shia Wager. Yeah, the show will be online this week, but things won't change too much with how you guys are used to watching. Uh, we have a great show overall for you guys today. We got Save the World Weapons that should be in Battle Royale in the rotation. One of interest goes through the story of Ghost and Shadow, and we have all your favorite memes in low ground. That's right. Now, while we were off, Shio, the Gref made history with 2.5 million people watching his stream when his skin was released. What does that mean? Honestly, it just means that this game is more alive than ever. And that's something not many people think about when, you know, Fortnite's in the discussion. But obviously on Twitch, obviously in many different communities, not just, you know, in North America, internationally, Fortnite is still on top. And that is always beautiful to see, Pookie. It's definitely beautiful indeed. But up next, we've got the rotation where we run down the top five save the world weapons that should be in Battle Royale. <laughs> PvE games always get the most interesting weapons and Fortnite Save the World isn't an exception. Compared to Battle Royale mode, Save the World always has received a much, much larger number and variety of weapons. Today we'll be taking you through the top 5 Save the World weapons that would be useful in Battle Royale as well. At number 5, we have the Old Betsy. Epic has tried a lot of things with scope-free snipers and sniper-like guns, but they only really got the concept right with the hunting rifle. Old Betsy is also a sniper without a scope that has a quick reload speed and a decent fire rate. This would be especially good on a weapon in the current season where the new lever action rifle tries to be something similar but fails big time. Number four on our list is the Duet. Duet is a bulky, slow firing assault rifle that is nothing like any weapon Battle Royale has ever had. Some of the slow firing ARs come close, but the Duet has that satisfying heavy bullet feel, but without a scope and with good range. Since it is accurate and does decent damage, Epic could add decreased movement speed to balance it out just like the minigun. At number three on our list, we have Crescendo, a sniper rifle that makes enemies dance and can be charged up to deal even more damage. Crescendo is basically a boogie bomb that does damage, but to balance it out, it works only from long distances. This would also make it a good slow firing assault rifle that has no bloom, but has a chance of making the enemy dance. Of course, in Battle Royale, you wouldn't need to get a kill to make someone dance. At number two, we have the Black Drum, a high impact shotgun. Fortnite has experimented with plenty of shotguns in the Battle Royale mode over the seasons, and they're only beginning to push the possibilities. The new Dragon Shotgun from season five that sets wooden structures on fire is the first time they have added extra features to a shotgun. Along with the obvious opposite option, a freeze effect, high impact would also be a great way to execute a shotgun. The black drum has a slow fire rate, moderate damage, and high impact that pushes enemies back. This would be great for build battles, where you can push back and drop your enemies all the way from height. At number one, we have the quad launcher, a fire type explosive weapon. Maybe asking for a flamethrower in Fortnite would be a bit too much, but the quad launcher from Save the World would make for a perfect counter to campers and high ground warriors. Building in Fortnite has evolved to a level where the skill ceiling is just too high for new players. The game needs something that can counter building and the fire based mechanics that we already have in the game can be used to balance this. The quad launcher is a low damage explosive weapon that sets everything on fire immediately. If executed correctly in Battle Royale, this would be a great way to burn and bring down those giant build battle towers that allow for plenty of hiding spaces. If executed correctly in Battle Royale, this would be a great way to burn and bring down those giant build battle towers that allow for plenty of hiding spaces. Shio, what do you think about moving some of these save the world weapons over to the battle royale? I mean, every time we've seen them, you know, like the quad launcher make its way over to BR, it always adds a new flavor to Fortnite. And if any of these weapons are coming in, it's always getting spicy. There's explosions, there's some overtuned weapons that are really fun to play with. But if you were adding, you know, your own version of spice to battle royale, if you had to pick a weapon, Pookie, from save the world to come to battle royale, which one would it be? 
For me personally, uh, it has to be the Deathwing. First of all, it just has an incredible name, the Deathwing. You feel powerful when you're using it, so hello, why not? It's basically an automatic sniper rifle that uses medium bullets. So, you know, it's a little bit OP. You still have to hit your shots. They're still considered skill shots. It's just a ton of fun to use, and it really speeds up the pace of sniping, which is something that I personally really enjoy. Uh, but we have to move, to move on because I did catch up with the Llama Sir to find out everything that's going on with him. Today, we are joined by a Fortnite YouTuber who has amassed over 2 million subscribers and has released more than 1,100 videos on his channel since its inception. That's right, we are talking to the Llama Sir. Llama Sir, how are you doing yep, today? that's me. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk with me of all course. things Fortnite today. Uh, first things first, though, for our viewers, how did you get started creating Fortnite content? What were you working on before Fortnite and what drew you to the game? Um, so before Fortnite, I'd been doing Rocket League for a while, which is funny because it just like got acquired by Epic Games and is now free. So it's kind of like come full circle. but. Yeah, around like three years ago, I was doing Rocket League and then, you know, Fortnite came out and my friends started playing it around like season zero when it started to pick up steam. And then they were like, hey, you got to try out this game. It's super fun. And I wasn't sure about it at first, but then we started playing together and it was like immediately I was hooked. <laughs> Just it's such a perfect game to play with friends. And um, I even have like the first... I recorded the first couple of times we played and I was absolutely terrible, but we were having so much fun. So <laughs> nice. I knew from then it was like amazing. <laughs> you got bit by the Fortnite bug. There's been mm -hmm. no going back For sure. ever since. Uh, now, the Llama Sir is arguably one of the most appropriate names that you could have chosen. How did you yeah. come up with that? Were you using that in Rocket League too? Yeah, so I mean, we came up, or I came up with that like years ago i've been doing youtube for around like six years so all the way back i think it was like in middle school <laughs> or not middle school maybe more high school but me and a buddy were talking about like if you had a youtube channel what would your name be and we're like well it's you gotta have something unique so at the time like llamas were popular in our school for some weird reason and it was also like uh there was like rage comic memes back then there nice. was one with like sir so I decided to combine both of those and somehow came up with the Llama Sir, which is uh, definitely fun, but it's funny how it kind of worked out. There's right. llamas in Fortnite and llamas are kind of popular all yeah. over, so. It's definitely a premonition that you had, for sure. Yeah, You're clairvoyant, sure, you can see into the future. We'll just leave it mm -hmm. at that. Now, speaking of that, timing is everything when you're creating content on YouTube and your weekly videos are always so helpful and informative for the Fortnite community. And they really help players try to navigate each weekly update. How do you film, edit, and on top of that, discover so much each update so quickly? What does that process look like for you? So yeah, like I'll usually, I'll first come up with an idea of what I want to film. Like, especially if there's a new update, I'll have in mind like what all the new stuff is. So. I'll go into game and, you know, record all these things. Sometimes I'll get some gameplay and then come back and edit it all together. Like sort of the day before I upload and then the day of I edit a bit more and put it up. So it's very time sensitive again. Like I haven't been able to take a vacation and since I've started doing Fortnite, but <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. So <laughs> every week is a vacation. <laughs> I mean, when you love your job, it doesn't feel like work, mm -hmm. right? I mean, kudos exactly. to that for sure. Now, we're about halfway through season five. Has there been anything that has surprised you thus far? I know that you're a pretty big story and lore guy. So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on the return of Zero Point? Oh man, like, so far, I mean, I feel like they're teasing a lot of different stuff. We haven't had like too much happen at the start of this season. And there's been like Operation Snowdown, which kind of took a break from the story, but you know, Agent Jonesy and the the story trailer, I've been talking about the story trailer a lot and how much is hidden inside of there. And like, what even is the, the point of the zero point? And why is Agent Jonesy there? If you go on the map even, there's like Bunker Jonesy who tells us even more about the zero point. Right. And uh, 
about the loop and escaping the loop and <laughs> it's definitely still a mystery like we don't really know but I think we're going to get a lot more info like really soon I think this story is gonna pick up a ton we still got like two months left in the season so there's plenty of time for them to reveal a ton more and they, they're definitely going to Agent Jonesy's Agent Jonesy has just started so <laughs> I'm excited Nice, nice. You heard it here first, folks. Llama making his predictions for the rest of season mm -hmm. five. We'll have to see if those predictions ring true or not. Now, speaking of lore, we cover a lot of that on this show. What has been your favorite storyline Epic has created so far, and what about it really resonated with you? Um, I think it'd have to be like a season or two where like Kevin the Cube showed up on the map. Nice. That was just such a... It was one of those seasons where it kind of like went on the entire season. The cube, or there was like lightning all of a sudden on the map, and then out of nowhere, this giant cube shows up, <laughs> and we have no idea what it was. And then it starts moving around the map, and like people were getting eliminated by it, and people were watching it. It's just, it was a really funny thing. And then it, uh, the community got behind it and gave it the name Kevin for some reason, <laughs> which is just, it was really cool to see the community like react to that story and follow it around and then it went into the, like uh loot lake and turned it all bouncy for like a week or so or something right. like that and people were bouncing around and then like it floated up into the air as an island it got crazy <laughs> well thank you so much lama star for joining me today have a great yeah, rest thank of your you. day
If hot drops didn't get you hyped up, then we're hoping low grounds will. If not, please consult a doctor. First up, Lachlan shows off his new face cam background. All right, everybody, today I'm here to show you guys a brand new, what I think is revolutionary Fortnite content material. So as you guys know, I have the green screen behind me and now it will reflect my in-game health. So as you can see right now in game, I have 100 health. I have a green background border behind me. And as I drink shields, the border around me will start to power up on brand there. But what if we were to get 200, 100 health, 100 shield, we would have this fully powered up face cam border and it updates in real time someone throws a grenade at me oh no shields are gone and i get that cool little shield break effect as well there's multiple variations of what can actually happen there you go i'm on 30 now it blinks red say i'm at 30 health and i'm drinking a 50 pot it'll give the shield barrier they're like kind of two separate entities on my face cam border that's a definite game changer shio i might have to get this for my stream i hope you look good in red Shio, it brings up my eyes, okay? Okay, I respect it. I respect it. Uh, next up, we have Nick Eggplant, who posted a couple of pictures of a gift that his sister gave him. It's a supply drop, complete with a med kit and a chug splash. That is so cool. I remember when they were doing the fall skirmish a couple of years ago, you had to make something from the game that you had just laying around your house. I, I don't know if this girl had these items laying around her house, but she definitely would have taken first place. Nick, your sister is a real one. <laughs> for sure now moving on from there chinese noodle dog's victory was so good that even his truck got in on the celebration step one board the battle bus step two eliminate all opponents step three victory royale step four breakdancing truck Nice, a little bit of profit too. I think step three might be Elims. It might be that VR in total. Who knows? We're still on the board to research it in total. Still though, next up, Reddit user YeetRG posted a video of his daughter getting her first solo win. This is so unbelievably wholesome. It's just really nice to have a reminder, some nostalgia of the first one you ever had playing solos or squads. I know, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a complete fluke. I got it with an RPG, but you know what? I deleted the VOD so nobody <laughs> could call me out on it. Finally, Alta Calls created a concept skin for Jacket from Hotline Miami. What in the cluck did I just look at there, Shio? Whoa, 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 Pookie. That's a little bit of a foul mouth you got going on there, don't you think? <laughs> I have to be honest, though. You pair that with the, the cluck emote, I'm sold if it's in the game for sure. It's a good package. I'm liking the neon vibe that's going on. But we have to move on to point of interest where we're looking at the story of Ghost and Shadow. Battle Royale has always set itself apart from other games in the genre with its engaging storyline. On the first island, we went through the entire storyline of the visitor arriving on the Fortnite island on a meteor, and many characters' attempts to acquire the power of the zero point, the island's source of power. When the Chapter 1 map went into a black hole in Season X, we were introduced to a new Fortnite island in Chapter 2, and with it came a bunch of new characters and a new chapter in the Fortnite storyline. Today, we'll be taking you through the story of Ghost and Shadow, the two factions that started a war for control on the Chapter 2 island. The introduction of the new Fortnite map brought with it a bunch of new places and characters. These characters quickly formed two groups and started a political war on this new island. The first two seasons of Chapter 2 focused entirely on these two groups of people, Alter, also known as Shadow, and Ego, also known as Ghost. Ego was the group of people that were new to the island and were exploring it, only to find out that the group of the people called Alter were already on to something. It was also revealed that the group called Alter was led by a character called Chaos Agent. Chapter 2 Season 1 was all about Alter and Ego struggling to get control of the island. The Battle Pass featured a bunch of skins with Alter and Ego styles, and these two groups were later renamed to Ghost and Shadow respectively. 
The center of the island, which initially started out as a tiny island with a small house on it, was also converted into the headquarters of the ruling group called the Agency. In the week before season two launched, Fortnite released a bunch of real life posters that had a number and a golden hand print on it. It was a recruitment drive for the Agency, which was released after the season update. The Agency was set up right in the house where we saw random objects turning into gold before the season update. This makes us believe that it belonged to a character called Midas, who could turn whatever he touched into gold. Midas owned the Agency and was yet to pick sides in the ongoing war between Ghost and Shadow. The Season 2 Battle Pass let each player pick which faction they wanted to side with, and the choices were permanent. The rest of Season 2 was all about this war, as both factions tried their best to gain control over the Agency. Season 2 ended with the Device event, where Midas' true intentions were revealed. He intended to use a device of some sort to control the storm and dominate the island. However, his attempt failed, and the island was flooded entirely, leading us to a Season 3 map that was partially filled with water. In this process, the agency was also destroyed. The reason behind the political war between Ghost and Shadow and the real identity of the device was later revealed. A lot of people had theories about the Zero Point being on the new map as well, since Ghost and Shadow were trying too hard to control the agency, but we all just assumed it was in the bunker near Caddy Corner. The Galactus event finally clarified its real location to us. When Galactus came to the Fortnite Island in the Season 4 live event searching for the power of Zero Point, he went straight for the Authority and pulled it out of its vault. This clarifies the theory that Ghost, Shadow, and Midas were all vying for control over the Zero Point, and in turn, the island. Post-annihilation of the Agency, the henchmen seem to have sided with the IO Guards, and might just be working for the group of interdimensional agents that are now trying to regulate the Zero Point. Until we have any further updates, we can only continue to enjoy the sights of the two henchmen having fun around the island. It looks like things are okay between Ghost and Shadow, for now. The two henchmen were seen in a friendly dance battle, and even relaxing on the edge of the island. It certainly seems like they got the happy ending they deserved. All right, Shio, take me back to season two. Which side did you pick, Ghost or Shadow? The Shio and me picked Ghost, but the Wager picked Shadow. What I'm trying to say is that I like agents on both sides, I like the storyline for both sides as well. So I'm kind of undecided myself, or maybe I already have, but I can't classify slash leak what I actually chose. Um, that would be my answer, though. Wow, uh, kind of more uh, complicated than what I was bargaining for, but that about does it for us. But for more of our content, be sure to check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at WatchWOF. Thank you so much for watching, and as usual, here is your virtual Victory Royale with Cheese.